creative minds meet, they talk about moving images of the city that inspire them. Legendary man of cinema Pierre Rizyant talks with Singapore filmmaker Bu Jinfeng. I'm Bu Jinfeng. Films have been my passion and my life for the past eight years. I've written and directed seven short films and completed my first feature-length film, Sandcastle, two years ago. It premiered at the Cannes Film Festival International Critics Week in 2010. During the second run of Sandcastle in Singapore, I had the chance to meet Pierre Rizion for the first time, a massively influential figure on the international cinema scene. For many, he is amicably addressed as Man of Cinema. Clint Eastwood has dubbed him Mr. Everywhere. And to Quentin Tarantino, he personifies a samurai warrior for the filmmakers he loves. Pierre comes quite often to this part of the world. I first met him when he came to a screening of Sandcastle during its second run in Singapore. He was recently invited by the Cinematheque to participate in a roundtable about Asian films. I gave him a copy of the newly released DVD of my film. Thank you, I know the film and I like it. Pierre gave me a great quote for the DVD. Kind words from the man of cinema. We sat down to catch up about the Cannes Film Festival, his love affair with cinema, and the Asian filmmakers who continue to inspire him. Thank you. So, I mean, you were a, a, a film critic, a publicist, director... First of all, I would kind of correct you. Uh -huh. uh, in a way, I was a publicist, but the way I was practicing publicism, it is not at all with what people do as publicists. Uh -huh. I initiated to make private screenings for presenting a film to the most important film critics. Mm -hmm. And for, uh, what made my career, in a way, on that level, was a picture called The Servant. It's a British classic. And this film had been shown in, a, in Venice in 1963 and with almost unanimous bad reviews from France. So I, I was intent to get the picture successful. So I did a private screening for maybe the seven or eight important critics. And when the picture came out, in uh, Paris in April 1964, all these critics wrote an extremely positive review. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was not publicizing, it was really you know, creating the mood and speaking with people, arguing with them uh, about the qualities of a film, and it's what I always did. Mm. So it was more like a, a curatorial kind of a role that you, you could did? You could say that, yeah. I have been, I've been many things. I've been also a small distributor for art theatres. I have been also already, I was very friendly with some festivals. People were asking me to uh, advise about what films to show or not to show. Uh, also, I, was, I became very friendly with many f directors, friends or elsewhere. I was the person who brought uh, Coppola, Scorsese, uh, people like John Boorman, Jerry Schatzberg to Cannes for their first film. You were credited for bringing you know, the first Chinese film to Cannes, The Touch of Zen. Um, how, how did that happen? It happened because actually before I brought any Chinese film to Cannes, uh, I opened a picture in France called The Arch by a young lady director called Tang Shushuen. And she did that film and with an actress uh, living in Hollywood, a Chinese actress called Liza Lu. And I opened it in Paris, I think it was 1969. And the picture got very, very good reviews from uh, French critics and made, I think, four months in a small art theatre in Paris, which at that time was, and still today, is very, very good uh, career for an art theatre or repertory theatre. Then Tang Shushuen made a second film. And so she asked me to come uh, to Hong Kong to see if I could help her on the final editing. When I was in Hong Kong, I was curious, you know, at that time, people knew only about Bruce Lee. It was 1973. And as I saw some films, I was very impressed by three directors. One was uh, King Wu. The best one of his films was Touch of Zen, Shanu. And I liked it very much. And uh, I brought it in 1975 at the Cannes Film Festival. And it was really a sensation. You know? I started to be more interested in Chinese cinema, the Asian cinema. 
and uh, my second country, which I put on the map, if I can say, was the Philippines through uh, the film by Lino Broca, who again was completely unknown in, uh, in Cannes or elsewhere. How do you think the film festival in Cannes has evolved over the years? Oh. It has enormously evolved. That's the point that uh, if today you go to Cannes, you were in Cannes, yeah. uh, you cannot imagine what it was, you know, when I went to Cannes in 1964. In 1964, I would say, Cannes was almost, almost a kind of small village. And it was, we were a family, you know, and we were mixing with filmmakers. For example, I, I walked in the streets with Robert Redford when he was a big star, and no one, you know, it was easy. I walked in the street with Jack Nicholson and people like that. And we were mixing. You know, you, you would have been in Cannes, you would have met him. You could, maybe, you could have been in a screening and Robert Redford could have sat next to us and they would have introduced you to Robert Redford. Mm -hmm. And you could have spoken with Robert Redford and maybe the day after he would have come to see your film. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing doesn't exist anymore, you know. Yeah. That, uh, that sense of family is completely lost. In mm -hmm. Cannes now, many times it's, a, it's an house of strangers. Yeah, when I was there, I was actually hoping to see some films, but I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was just so busy promoting my own film. Now, if you are in Cannes, it's a totally different mood. Also, it, it, it has become what it is, which I think it has, Cannes is still deadly important. I think by itself, Cannes is more important than all the other festivals put together. But if you come to Cannes uh, without being prepared to that, or if you don't have a godfather to take care of you, if you don't have a, like that, in your case, I'm uh, happy of that, uh, someone like Charles Tesson, who is a very respected critic, mm -hmm. liked your film and he was really responsible to get it selected. Mm -hmm. So he was, kind, he was kind of uh, making things easy for you. So if someone who arrives with this kind of advantage can be completely lost, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. can, can be very brutal. The audience can be brutal. Uh, they, they could have been brutal in the past, but not as brutal as they are. And someone can go to Cannes with a very good film, and the picture will not be that well received because there is too many things around. People are obsessed by the market, people are obsessed by glory and things like that. Okay, let's talk about other Asian uh, filmmakers. Yeah. I mean, personally, I mean, I've, you know, I've always looked up to filmmakers like Ho Sao Xian, yeah. Edward Yang, and, yeah. um, and then more recently, the films of Li Changdong which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, I could not agree more with you on Osha Oshien, Edouard Yang and Li Shangdong, you know, and, and probably other people. These, these guys, you know, actually I was the one to bring their first pictures to Cannes, you know. They, these directors created a turning point in cinema. In fact, earlier this year, you, you came for a retrospective um, yeah. of Edward Yang at the yeah. National Museum. And it's very good that the National Museum did a retrospective of Edouard Yang to keep him alive. So your city is very lucky. Mm -hmm. 